Good morning. Sunday morning. All right, truth seekers of light and wisdom. Now, I want to do a video on General Mike Lynn and his potential connection to an operation to save our country. I've been uh, somewhat distracted by the need to verify the hammer and scorecard allegation regarding the elections. So I'll go ahead and intro this video with a phone video done by Ann Vandersteel. You guys share this out. They just took down my Twitter account along with General Flynn and Sidney Powell all at once. They just went. The date of this um, recording was January 9th, 2021, just days after the um, Capitol event, which then led to mass Twitter suspensions of prominent conservative users. Down because I'm sharing the truth out there on the election front that Dennis Montgomery can absolutely prove and the team of white hat hackers that have access need him to take the gag order off Dennis Montgomery. This is an urgent request. To anybody that's listening right now, please share this out and tag at Real Donald Trump on Twitter. You've been chosen. So this is an appeal by Anne for Americans to use social media to help get the message out to our previous, in my mind, still current president, Donald Trump, to help lift the gag on Dennis Montgomery so the hammer and scorecard truth can finally be revealed. The focus of this video is the man, Dennis Montgomery. He was a search term that brought me to this video. As some of you may recall, known patriot and wonderful, masterful entrepreneur, Mike Lindell, had a recent production to expose the election irregularities called Absolute Proof. I found this article on thepostemail.com written by Sharon Rondeau alleging that hammer hoaxer infiltrates Lindell's Absolute Proof. This article basically casts doubt on the reputation of a Dennis Montgomery, a man who introduced the hammer supercomputer controversy to the state of Arizona with an allegation that the residents of Arizona were being spied on using this technology. Montgomery is introduced as a former CIA subcontractor deemed the man who conned the Pentagon, uh, who thrust himself into the presidential election circus through efforts of a certain Mary Fanning and Alan Jones. That Ann Vandersteel clip I had showed you appeared when I searched Dennis Montgomery under the term new, uh, but when you go to relevance as a search term. Very interestingly, these Fox News pieces appear. Uh, I listened to the first one, which basically talks about how a company called Circa, in this video, what Circa is, is not described, but Sarah Carter basically makes the allegation that it was discovered that the FBI legally shared spy data on Americans. Uh, this was through declassified FISA documents. So just to confirm my suspicions, I go over to TulsaToday.com. This is a 2017 article. It reports, Circa reports that Dennis Montgomery is suing former FBI director James Comey and other government figures, alleging the Bureau has covered up evidence he provided them showing widespread spying on Americans that violated civil liberties. So here's that source there. Now we go back to the random Fox News video. This larger issue of how much abuse may be going on but beneath the intelligence community's cover. And we, we need to get an answer about how often our identities are compromised, how often our privacy is affected. We've been, been looking at this for three months, and there's a lot of concrete evidence, facts, that there are violations going on that need to be addressed. And, and Sarah, so what your report is saying here is you had an ex-Intel contractor Montgomery. suing Comey, saying that the FBI, on a mass scale covered up mass civil liberties violations against Americans, and he has evidence. Isn't that a little uh, bit bigger than, than Russia collusion with no evidence, as I just proved up to this point? Around this time of 2017, I was just all over these people on Fox News. And Hannity, uh, Sarah Carter, Solomon, just, just picking up every little piece of information I could get from these folks in an attempt to get to the bottom of the Russian scam. Okay, so now we have a high-level authoritative source mentioning Montgomery. Now back to Sharon's article. She notes that Montgomery's infamous past has been subject to many articles at the Post and email. However, Fanning and Jones have deliberately failed to disclose any of Montgomery's dubious past dealings to their readers, including findings by two federal judges, respectively, of perjury and fraud. 
In one breathtaking example, Fanning and Jones neglected to inform their audience of Montgomery's six-count felony indictment from Clark County, Nevada, for allegedly passing a check with insufficient funds in the amount of $1.8 million in Las Vegas Casino, a case which remains open after more than a dozen years. So I go to the linked article, Our View, Get Tough on Fraudulent Contractor. Dennis Montgomery obtained $20 million in federal government contracts with a plan to provide the United States a terrorist nabbing technology. Turns out, the one, only ones who are nabbed were the U.S. government and taxpayers. That's according to an investigation by the New York Times that showed that the computer technology that promised to stop another al-Qaeda attack in the U.S. turned out to be a huge boondoggle that the government's now trying to cover up. Both the Bush and Obama administrations appear to have been duped by the ruse of the secret software. The computer company was hidden behind some high-profile false alarms, including a presidential order of a French airlines bound for the U.S. to turn around. The Times investigation involved some two dozen current and former officials and business associates of Montgomery. Government documents and emails and emerging themes suggest the entire project was a ruse. Montgomery was described by his former lawyer as a quote-unquote con man. For now, it appears Justice Department is not going after taxpayers' $20 million. I ask, why not? Montgomery is about to go to a trial for passing $1.8 million in bad checks at the casinos in Las Vegas, but there are no federal charges pending. The article concludes, It's obvious that plenty of mistakes were made by two administrations in this national security fiasco. It eventually took an investigation by the French to shed light on the fraudulent technology. Now the Obama administration needs to come clean on this case, pursue money paid to Montgomery, and bring criminal charges no matter how embarrassing the incident is to both administrations. Okay, so now we're going to return to the Mike Lindell article. So Montgomery worked his way into the documentary. Uh, since March 2017, Fanning and Jones identified Montgomery as their sole source information on The Hammer, including during their appearances of Dave Genda's Operation Freedom and Brandon Howell's TV shows. Fanning colleagues, Lieutenant General Thomas McKerney, remember this? The uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, and they're trying to get him out on the 25th Amendment or to impeach him. Why? Well, uh, because on Wednesday, they took Pelosi's laptop. Uh, they being the White Hats. Fanning colleagues General Thomas McInerney and former NSA developer Kirk Weeb accordingly hailed Montgomery as a world-class American statesman and American hero, respectively. Here, Kirk Weeb is introduced as a former NSA senior analyst. Video titled Hammer Project Kirk Weeb. Here, uh, Brandon House introduces Lieutenant General McInerney. Mary Fanning is Lieutenant General retired uh, Thomas McInerney. Uh, General, thank you for being with us today. Uh, thanks very much for having me, Brandon. Well, you're a patriot, and uh, your bio is very impressive. I would encourage people to look it up. I was reading it today. Uh, you're a pilot during the Vietnam War. Uh, you have served in positions under the Secretary of Defense and the Vice President of the United States. I mean, the list is long. I won't go through it all, but it's a very, very impressive resume. Um, General, we've been learning from Mary about the hammer. And when you hear this, you think, well, this has just got to be the stuff of conspiracy. Uh, but, you know, then along comes a guy like you with three stars, you know, that you had on your shoulder, giving a lot of credibility with your bio. And you're backing up everything she's saying in regards to this hammer, because I think I heard you on Steve Bannon talking about it. What are your thoughts? I mean, just let we. Now you're going to hear Lieutenant General McInerney mention uh, Mary, Mary Fanning. Uh, I talked to very senior people. I can't divulge their names, but they're important people. And still trying to get the word out to the general public. Now, basically, Rush and Sean are behind. They're now talking about the corruption in the election process, but not how it was done. Mary and I are talking about specifically the tools they use, the Democrats use. And, of course, the visionary founder of this, Dennis Montgomery, and the important role he's played for our national security. But that's what we're talking about. All right. So just there, you got the connection to Mary, to Dennis Montgomery, and uh, the lieutenant general actually a little bit dissing Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh. Continuing back to this article. All right. So continuing. Fanny's strategy changed, however, when on January 3rd, 2021, she reported an article and on January 13th claimed to House to have in her possession evidence of foreign interference which allegedly changed the outcome of the U.S. presidential election. 
To House's audience, she noticeably omitted any reference to the Hammer, Scorecard, or Dennis Montgomery. At that point, Fanning referenced only an unnamed source of the evidence and identified whistleblower, unidentified whistleblower who allegedly brought the evidence of election tampering to then FBI Director James Comey in 2015. Uh, remember that um, Fox News video I showed you earlier? And recall that Dennis Montgomery's name actually does not appear in this interview. But when I search the term Dennis Montgomery, the video appears. Very mysterious. Uh, much like Fanning referencing Montgomery as just an, a whistleblower all of a sudden. Fanning's new claim was incorporated into Lindell's documentary on alleged election fraud, Absolute Proof, released last Friday, in which Lindell appeared to rely not only as credible evidence of vote tampering, but also hand-drawn, I mean, hand-down proof of the same. Um, so listeners, viewers, I know this is a wall of text here, but I think what she was referencing is uh, the alleged CIDL situation with the servers in Germany where our votes went to, um, also potentially in Italy, um, in Iran, and China. Anyways, foreign interference. Though not mentioned in any of this material, this also sort of implicates uh, Colonel Phil Waldron, uh, among others. Okay, so taking a 40-foot view of this, the author Sharon Rondo is basically accusing Montgomery of infiltrating Lindell's documentary with information that she deems to be inaccurate concerning the Hammer Scorecard program, the potential for election theft using overseas servers. Uh, by linking, I determined there is a history of articles she wrote on this Montgomery character, which in total seemed to bring into question the man's reputation and character. I will I've review some of that evidence with you. Uh, also, some interesting associations are brought forward. Um, so while diving into this reporter's articles, one thing I wanted to know right off the bat is, uh, was this somehow a flaming leftist who just had something against Montgomery because she's against anybody who would want to take the steps necessary to expose the corrupt secret supercomputer programs that are destroying our privacy? Well, at the bottom of one of her articles, uh, the Hammer Montgomery, the man in the middle article, I read this paragraph, which uh, contradicts that assumption. In a November 11, 2020 editorial in the Nevada Independent, author John L. Smith III, largely relying on a column by the Daily Beast and referencing the American Report, recapped Montgomery's history of unproven claims with one of his own. As he tries to alter the reality of losing the 2020 election, President Donald Trump is relying on high-tech sleight-of-hand artist and former Nevada businessman Dennis Montgomery to help spread misinformation about widespread voter F. The Post and Millennial maintains that there is no evidence of the Trump White House or campaign having embraced or relied on Montgomery's claims about the hammer as having conducted election interference. Rather, it is Fanning and Jones who have forged that connection. So she's very careful not to put the blame on Trump because Trump had relied on his potential intelligence surrounding the hammer supercomputer causing the election to get changed. Sorry, I just had to stumble with my words because I can't say certain words like the F word on YouTube, uh, given the ridiculous political environment that we have. So that degree of care does sort of show or at least imply her political standing as not being left of center. So I can at least take away that potential reason for her to prevaricate or imagine these negative associations with Montgomery. Uh, Sharon does appear to have some skin in the game with regards to potential beef with Mr. Montgomery. In this article, editor intends to pursue misdemeanor conviction for a bad faith complaint. It's noted the Post and email editor received a certified letter from the Washington State Department of Social and Health Services informing her that she was subject to the complaint of mental abuse of a vulnerable adult. Uh, the author goes on to claim that Ms. she suspects that Mr. Montgomery may have filed this camp this complaint because she was investigating him. So I will use Ms. Rondu's situation to bridge into the topic of Montgomery's true integrity by looking into some of these past issues that are brought up. On September 2nd, editors sent additional information with links to applicable articles and reports published in both the post and email and elsewhere, part of which reads, I never agreed to interview Mr. Montgomery, and he's trying to silence both me and Mr. Zulo, who supervised his work for the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office in 2014, and monitor him for another year, only to find that his claims of having highly classified information about government surveillance, which he was paid to substantiate, were unfounded. Other experts agreed. And it links to this document here. 
Okay, so in this document, we have a few individuals involved. We have uh, Brian Michaelowitz, uh, basically a detective listed as Sheriff X. We have Jerry Sheridan, a sheriff. We have Thomas Drake, the originator of this document. Drake writes to Brian, good morning, Kirk Weeb and I providing you a summary attached of our data analysis of alleged key data designed to prove the source's case. We found that he is complete and total fraud. All he has done is provide you with readily available lists of email addresses, names, phone numbers, and both individuals' businesses and a lot of framed up information, data and code, but no proof of whence they came and a lot of faked and made up documents and analysis. You know, just help you keep up with these names. Remember uh, Kirk Weeb? Uh, he just recently did a video with um, Sidney Powell uh, talking about the issues of election. And again, this document's from back in 2014. Now, I'll skim through this for you. On uh, November 14th, I mean 2014, the 8th, um, Weeb and Drake, both former employees of the NSA and having many years of experience in the matter of data analysis for intelligence production purposes, met with Mike Zulo and Detective Brian Mikevitz of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office to examine certain data alleged to reflect partial results of clandestine collection of a large volume of email and telephone communications and document files obtained from commercial networks and private databases of targeted organizations during the mid-2000s. The data examined consists of lists of communications, addresses, individuals, companies, and organizations located at various addresses within the United States. The 45 hard drives contained high volumes of recordings of the Al Jazeera television network. Among the alleged applications examined were three purported C code files allegedly associated with NSA, Thin Thread, and Trailblazer programs. Upon analyzing the formal caveats associated with these particular programs and other data allegedly coming from classified sources, Mr. Weeb and Mr. Drake encountered non conventional coding formats and classification caveats not resembling typical government practice. In fact, three code files were actually fake and framed to look more real code, but crudely cut out and pasted from drippets of existing code made up from standard code buffer routines, video device processing code, and ActiveX lookup and browser code. Comments were not in a proper syntax or followed standard naming conventions and were clearly and simply manufactured to make them look real. For example, one of the files had a comments section noting the Trailblazer program from the 2000-2010 time frame when Trailblazer was abandoned by the NSA in 2006. In summary, these wholly fake files did not consist of actual software code from any of the NSA programs noted. Um, so again, uh, Zulo and Mikevitz were dispatched to Seattle, Washington to interview government co subcontractor Dennis Montgomery pursuant to his allegations of illegal U.S. government surveillance of residents of Arizona in a nation using the secret supercomputer of his design and creation he dubbed the Hammer. Okay, so now I'm going to this December 2nd, 2019 article titled, What Evidence Do You Have? by Ms. Sharon Rondo. Uh, previously, you heard the name Mike Zulo. So Mike Zulo is essentially the Arizona cold case post lead investigator. Um, August 1st, 2019 interview with Kevin Shipp, Jason Goodman, and Zulo explained in detail in, in that 2014, Aperiel felt compelled to investigate Montgomery's claims of government data collection of more than 150,000 Maricopa County residents. I read this sentence primarily because Kevin Shipp is mentioned and Jason Goodman is mentioned. Uh, Shipp has a pretty well-known presence on Twitter. Uh, he posted this link to the post email article that even started me on this journey. Um, I'm sometimes a comment guy for Kevin Ship, where I just make some type of snarky remark to his various comments, uh, basically attacking the uh, Q movement. He goes out of his way to blast uh, his followers or others who see his post for reading and believing in the whole notion of the plan. He does it to almost an excessive degree that makes it seem as though maybe he's paid to do so. Or it's, like, or it's part of his mission, perhaps unpaid. Um, here's an introduction to an incredible blog um, that discussed Jason Goodman's role in what I'll describe best as the LARP Wars. Uh, numerous figures who are involved with intelligence who play complex gray warfare scams on the public through their YouTube media and otherwise, allegedly. Uh, Googling LARP Wars, moving the goalposts will bring that blog right up. So for me, uh, once... Uh, Allegedly, ex-CIA Kevin Shipp's name comes up and Jason Goodman's name comes up. I know we're in an area of information 
where there are layers and layers of fabrications on various issues and disputes between various characters, either real or play acted, which means getting to the truth of the matter is going to be rather cumbersome, to say the least. So I say all that to say we have this document um, produced by Weeb and Drake uh, to suggest that Montgomery fabricated evidence of alleged government documents showing unauthorized data collection on the citizens of Maricopa. It would seem that Weeb is going against Montgomery in that case, but I then take you to the present day where Weeb is talking about uh, how the voting irregularities were exposed using Hammer and Scorecard. The that works with it called Scorecard is designed to change votes on the fly as they are reported by tallying locations in all precincts and counties, whatever applies to your state, as totals are reported via the internet. The data is grabbed in real time, changed, and sent on its way. And this happens in microseconds. No one notices a delay and just accepts the total. And this has been going on in numerous states to include battleground states during this whole election. And it is still going on. Lawyer Sidney Powell, the personal attorney of General Michael Flynn, and someone who is known to the President of the United States, uh, appeared on Lou this evening and reported this fact. And she added the fact that data has been obtained from the whistleblower who built the capability, Mr. Dennis Montgomery, who is a national hero in this matter, having made this data available. There is for Okay, so see, he's now a national hero, even though this Kirk Wee supposedly looked at Montgomery's hard drives determined everything to be fabrication. Forensic evidence showing what data was changed, where it came from, and where it was going to. And a record is kept. That means there is direct, solid evidence of voter fraud perpetrated by the people that are operating this hammer scorecard combination to change the votes of the citizens of this country. And in my way of thinking, if that is true, Mr. Trump will have no problem in court overthrowing the kind of results we are seeing reported. All right. Let's recall some of Sidney Powell's claims. Created to produce altered voting results in Venezuela need to investigate, including the likelihood that 3% of the vote total was changed in the pre-election voting ballots that were collected digitally by using the Hammer program and a software program called Scorecard. In this article on the American Report, uh, Mary Fanning and Alan Jones comment that Dennis Montgomery, CIA DOD contractor turned whistleblower, designed and built the Hammer program. It appears the two also co-authored a book called The Hammer is the Key to the Coup, Political Crime of the Century. And this particular book uh, cost $2.99 on Amazon and is 490 pages long. So then the author, Sharon Rondo, provides us some audio recording to suggest that, in fact, Mr. Montgomery never created the Hammer supercomputer. This is allegedly a 2013 interview that Mr. Montgomery gave to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. They're guarded at the gates. Okay? The rooms are guarded. You can take no electronic devices in the building, no phones, nothing. Your shirt, no briefcases. Right? Into the building. When you go into the building, these are doors that have huge doors on them. I walk in there, there's a massive computer. So, did you never see it before? First time I'd ever seen it. Okay, so the first time he is taken to a secretive place. Now for number two. So, basically, the, I, I did not see the hammer yet or anything, do anything about it. Right? So, uh, 
So I did not see the hammer yet, did not know anything about it. We have uh, number three. So what happens if you can purchase something about this computer, they, they're going to go ahead. They've already purchased it. They purchased it, took them a month. So they they can sell with you? No, because they know, they know they what my price is. They know, well, I mean, they, when I met with them at the Air Force that, the first time, I told them. And then they knew it was my big boys. I don't have full context for that, but it is sort of suggested to be a follow-up to number two. I have not seen Hammer yet. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and throw some more names in. Uh, this is an article on uh, Forbidden Knowledge TV. Uh, how retired U.S. generals been contracted to war against the U.S. Uh, Tory Morass back in 10 days in D.C. with fellow members of Shadowgate Posse, including Patrick Burgey, Millie Weaver, Gavin Wentz, joined by Lieutenant Scott Bennett, Patrick Byrne, and others. I read from the article. Scorecard is the name of the application that runs on a hammer network that organizes and streamlines an enormous amount of data. Tor and Burgi have experience with the hammer, the scorecard, and ShadowNet, as she explains in this podcast. Quote, scorecard was what we used to help us understand communications between those various factions. Scorecard allowed us to decrypt communications between factions of mercenaries like Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Hamas, you name it. Patrick Burgi he actually created the ShadowNet, which was the way of merging these, those two components and perfecting it by using cyberspace and penetrating our social media, entertainment, and the whole nine yards. What has been happening to us as a nation the past four years is really a remedial psyop. Really remedial. They have deployed the ShadowNet and they themselves, if you go to army.mil, they tell you that they have deployed the ShadowNet with their own words. They call it ShadowNet. All right, so in yeah, just a few paragraphs, we have uh, Tor admitting working on Scorecard, a program that Mr. Montgomery said he created, and or I should be honest, Fanning and Jones said he created, and then he himself said he was introduced to it on an audio recording, allegedly. And then we have that Kirk Weeb character investigating with the Arizona Maricopa County Sheriff's Department to show that Montgomery's 2015 or 2014 claim of the Hammer Scorecard technology being used to spy on a local populace as being completely fraudulent and fabricated with large reams of material from Al Jazeera on one of the many hard drives that were presented as evidence. You see from all this that we have pretty much a deep web of deceptions and confusions. Various patriots, including Sarah Carter, Solomon, Lynn Wood, Sidney Powell, Tor, General Mike Flynn, Lieutenant General McKerney, and many more are at least potential dupes of a possible con or are willing participants at the worst. And that, of course, hinges on the reputation of these documents as being verifiable and true. I will now show you another document which details a dispute between Warren Trepp and Dennis Montgomery, uh, both co partners for this company, initially called Intrepid, which is later changed to Etrepid Technology, LLC. At the end of 98, Trep and Montgomery formed Intrepid, a company to develop pattern recognition and compression software. On September of 1998, Trep and Montgomery signed a contribution agreement wherein Montgomery received half of the ownership of Intrepid in return for providing certain computer software technologies to Intrepid. Um, before going on, I'll let you know that this is an FBI document dated January 31st, 2006. So going way back. Trepp advised that Montgomery has software programming skills. However, recently, Trepp has found out that Montgomery's skills may not be what he had purported them to be. Trepp cited a recent Air Force Office of Special Investigation Inquiry, which determined that Montgomery's programming skills were not what he alleged. Montgomery has hired other employees to do the programming and claimed that he did the work. Trepp recently learned that Montgomery would require eTrepid employees to falsify the results of live demonstrations for its customers. Jesse Anderson, a programmer for eTrepid, told Trepp that Montgomery would require Anderson and Jim Botter, another eTrepid employee, to go into the office at eTrepid while Montgomery was out in a nearby field with a toy bazooka to demonstrate eTrepid's recognition software capabilities. Montgomery instructed Anderson and Bauder to go into a room and wait to hear a noise on their cell phone and then instructed them to press a button on a computer keyboard 
that would display an image of a bazooka on a computer screen viewed by the customers, including Department of Defense employees. PREP advised that the Department of Defense employees were at the demonstration to make a judgment regarding the purchase of this technology. So you have a computer screen with uh, sensor tech to allegedly recognize a device in front of it and produce an image of that device on said screen. Um, however, other operators would go to another room to display the appropriate image for the device shown, the device always being planned, a bazooka. Trepp considers Montgomery to be a bright individual who is a workaholic and has been known to embellish facts to his advantage. Trepp further described Montgomery as being independent and arrogant. Trepp advised that he required Montgomery to provide him with a copy of all data on a source server once every year to protect himself and Montgomery should something ever happen to this data. Trepp advised that when he learned about the source server, he had deleted and Montgomery refused to return to work. He looked at the copies provided by Montgomery over the years and found that these disks were blank or contained no data relevant to Trepp's development efforts. Trepp advised that Montgomery goes to the El Dorado Casino Hotel and the Peppermilk Hotel Casino at night to gamble. Montgomery has told Trepp that he has a system for counting cards in an eight-deck shoe in blackjack. Trepp has known Montgomery to use a $300,000 line of credit at Nevada casinos. Montgomery's infamous past has been subject to many articles at the Post and Email. However, Fanning and Jones have deliberately failed to disclose any of Montgomery's dubious past dealings to their readers, including findings by two federal judges respectively of perjury, in quotes, and fraud, in quotes. In one breathtaking example, Fanning and Jones neglected to inform their audience of Montgomery's six-count felony indictment from Clark County, Nevada, for allegedly passing a check with insufficient funds in the amount of $1.8 million in Las Vegas Casino, a case which remains open after more than a dozen years. So there are many articles in the Post-Mail that bring into question Mr. Montgomery's intentions, his integrity, etc. The uh, leftist media is using the allegations concerning Montgomery's past as fuel to hurt uh, President Trump. From this, I suppose, left-wing reporter on AZ Central, he notes, the right-wing website, The American Report, apparently helped launch the idea in a story published October 31st. The American Report features, among other things, extensive stories reiterating right-wing conspiracy theories from the Obama administration era. The title of the article being, Man Behind Vote F Conspiracy Theory Previously Pushed Debunked Info with CIA Joe Aparia. And here is an MSM article which uh, leaves no question as far as the intent of the article from the picture. This one published the 9th of November, 2020. As Donald Trump refuses to concede the E, some of the most loyal allies have become obsessed with a bizarre new conspiracy theory about the race, insisting that Trump only lost because of a deep state supercomputer named Hammer. So, assuming the Hammer and Scorecard programs are fabricated, the impact, at least through our biased media, has been immense in a negative direction, further tarring those of us trying to simply figure it all out and put the pieces together to determine, is there a secret network of operatives trying to save the country? So there's going to be much more investigation needed to get to the bottom of the Hammer Scorecard mystery, as well as the potential secret network of patriots or misinformers who are purveying it. Um, I bring you to this interview on the WVW Broadcast Network, uh, dated February 10th, 2021, by Brandon House. I will start off with Mary, and then we'll go to Bill Waldron, and you'll see the context, uh, the degree of insight that they have to the controversy surrounding Montgomery. This person who wrote the hit piece knows, knows well that this information has been disproven that he is now pushing around, beyond which... The fact that he has the temerity to come out and say the things that he did about General McInerney and, you know, tells that he once worked for the CIA, well, he's just a pompous fool. And um, there's all sorts of information that will disprove him and often does. And I'm very surprised with those who carried his attack force. And anyone who reads his article, please go to the comments where he is called out by his readers called out very thoroughly, and they ask why this site is even carrying his bad information. Do and we, I'll leave we, it at there. Do we want to say the site or not? No, it's not worth even giving them the press. That's what they love. Exactly. Thank you. All right. 
So you want to does uh, does Wal- Wal- Colonel Waldron? We don't want to drag you into this, but if you want to, you, or do you want to move on? No, I I personally don't know uh, Dennis Montgomery, but uh, in doing open search open source research, uh, we came across a uh, an email uh, that was uh, dated October twenty sixth, twenty twenty. So literally a week before, uh, you know, a week before the election, uh, from uh, Mr. Greg Addington, Assistant U.S. Attorney in Reno, Nevada, the Bruce R. Thompson U.S. Courthouse and Federal Building, in response to uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Montgomery's uh, lawyer, uh, it is basically says your October 9th letter has been referred to me for response. Your letter references a post Bivens complaint you intend to file on behalf of Mr. Montgomery. And, and I'm not a lawyer, didn't stay at a Holiday Inn, so I think this is referring to he, he wants to be able to, to uh, respond to, to some of these, uh, these attacks uh, and, and lawsuits. Um, you also reference and provide a copy. Uh, you also reference and provide a copy of the protective order entered by the U.S. District Court in 2007 in litigation involving Mr. Montgomery. As you know, the protective order describes categories of information and materials which cannot be disclosed and which cannot be the subject of discovery or evidentiary, pre- evidentiary presentation based on the U.S. invocation of its state secrets privilege. Uh, in this letter, you state your view that the protective order clearly prevents Dennis Montgomery from filing a business complaint and possibly other complaints against the government. You request this office's views as to how you want us to proceed. It is our view that this protective order remains in place to preclude disclosures of the categories of information and related materials described in the order. Um, so, you know, it's, it's clear that, uh, as late as October 26th of 2020, the U.S. government, um, is still considering, uh, the fact that Mr. Montgomery possesses relevant information. And it's interesting that it came out right before the election. Um, maybe as, I don't know, maybe as a shot across the bow, but, um, you know, the, the, the two things just don't, uh, just don't add up. Um, we were also informed that uh, by a senior official, maybe even the national security advisor himself, that the program's hammer and scorecard don't exist. And, you know, our reply was, well, if, if hammer and scorecard don't exist, then there's no reason to keep Mr. Montgomery uh, restricted by a state secret policy memorandum and a <laughs> protective order, yeah. and uh, to which we got silent. So, uh, you know, it's, I don't know. I- to which we got silence. So in the interest of time, I cannot cover this whole interview, but I really recommend listening to it. Bill Waldron's take seems to suggest that the Hammer and court Scorecard existence is a motivation for Mr. Montgomery's gag order decision. As I've only partially shown you, Montgomery has a very storied past with numerous disputes which would likely lead to litigation. It would not be surprising if some of that litigation exists to the present day, even with parties involving the U.S. government. So I thought it would be a good idea to figure out exactly who is this man and uh, what does he look like? What does he sound like? There's not a whole lot of media on him that can be found. Here's uh, Mr. Montgomery explaining how you can use Harset data to possibly frame people. He's apparently the higher-pitched voice, which I do not believe fits this particular image of a man here. But anyways, I'll play and let you judge. Got yeah. We inadvertently collected uh, blah, 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 blah. It's innocuous information. Nothing could really be done with it. Mm-hmm. Social Security number? Credit card numbers? Credit card numbers? What else could be done with this information? What could you do if you wanted to destroy the life of somebody with this information? I'd go into their email accounts and I'd start uploading emails. I'd send pedophile or picture links into their email accounts of pedophile kids. I'd say this guy's a pedophile. I would create a list of a linked list. I'd upload into his email account all that. Then I'd download his email. I'd say, look at all the websites this guy's been to. He's been to pedophile accounts. How could you financially destroy somebody with this? Oh, it's easy. I just go in his bank account, move around. I go to the IRS. I I take the information out. Let's say I go, let's say because I went into J Edwards Morgan Stanley. Does it sound a little bit like fake it till you make it? Stanley. I go into his account, take all the information, send it over to the IRS. Let him have it. Oh, really? He only claimed eighty-seven thousand this year. Well, here's all of his bank account records. Oh, and by the way, they're offshore. I don't know if you knew with that. I, I kind of you know just make it up as you go along. I, there's an endless way I can do it. There's, there's so much data here, there's, there's no way to protect yourself. Just using my own discernment here. 
All right, Truth Seekers, it's been a long video. I'll have to end it here. I do feel that this type of investigation into these characters is likely going to be essential to really figuring out what's going on with the plan to save America, as well as the apparent election irregularities that have changed the course of history in this nation. I will provide links to some of the materials I used in the description. Please avail yourself to these links. Fact check me, and please suggest any possible additional avenues of inquiry if you so find any. Thanks for watching. Peace. It's easy to groom a child because an adult always has a position of power over a child. It's really hard to just look at somebody and say, that person's a predator. What you have to do is look at the behaviors and listen to the things that they say. We